can hope, okay? We can hope. And I think with Splice being so close to a potential second seed and the implications, if Splice takes second, it means they play the third seed in Group A, which is currently Fnatic or potentially Rocket. If Splice end third, they end up playing against Misfits in the quarterfinal, and nobody wants to do that. We'll expand on how those numbers work out a little later. As far as picks and bans are concerned, Camille, Melzahar, and Olaf off the table. So uh, the Olaf very specific ban towards Joko. He's brought in a lot throughout the regular season. Clearly, Splice just showing a lot of respect. They don't want to give him that freedom. Fascinating that the Gragas ban has actually come out because we have seen that since the return of IEM, since we've been playing on 7-4, 7-5, we've been seeing a lot more Gragas jungle. And it's something that Trashy has actually had a lot of success on. Now, I am thinking about this Elise pick. I think it has actually a lot of value in this uh, in the current metagame. We've seen it heavily prioritized over in the LCK. And I think that it is a jungler that Trashy actually has a, a lot of success on. And with uh, Graves and Rengar also off the table, surely that increases is the value of that Elise potential pick. For Vitality though, first pick, it's going to be the Lulu. Definitely raising in priority over the last couple of weeks. Teams now wanting to play her more as she's had some buffs a few patches ago and other supports around her have taken nerfs. So there's that Elise you predicted. So the uh, the Lulu is just a very well-rounded safe support right now. She she sets up for a lot of individual peel comps like we saw uh, from G2 last week, the whole Kalista Lulu composition. There's also been taught our Origin brought out the Lulu Cogmore composition. She's just such a great lane bully and she also just scales very nicely into the mid game. Now, when you're looking at the rest of the composition for Vitality, I think that it would be safe to pick up something like, uh, you could go for an Ezreal or a Caitlyn right now, look towards that hyper carry, but instead they're actually just focusing on getting a few comfort picks. Yeah, safety and comfort there for Joko with his Lee Sin. Uh, one of his most played champions now. This will be the fourth time the split. Vladimir locked in for Nuke Duck. What options does Senkex have in the mid lane to run into this? It looks like the answer will be Orianna at the moment. Uh, he could go for a Cassio as well. Cassio scales quite nicely and does well into a side lane. The risk you have with an Ori is the uh, the fact that Vitality are already starting to set up for a possible 1-3-1. Uh, it's not that unknown for Cabo to play more carries in the top lane. We've seen a shift back towards these carry top laners, which means that Splice could be in a bit of a difficult situation if they're not able to prevent this Vladimir from getting strong enough to go into a side lane later on. Alright, so potential side lane pressure. You know, you talked about the Fizz a few minutes ago, Venus. It's actually banned away by Vitality. They don't want to give that to Wanda. I'd love to see Wanda on Gnar. I think he's a phenomenal Gnar player. And also has been one of the star carries for Splice these last few weeks. Great, reliable performances on really anything. I think it would uh, be very risky to blind pick a Gnar. Yeah. If you're going to do it, you want to be picking it into the Renekton. Um, but I think that, ooh, speaking of Renekton, he's taken off the board. I'm thinking now like champions like Nautilus rise very heavily in value because you're looking at what possible answers are there for the Nautilus with Gragas taken off the board, with Shen, Renekton, Fizz even being taken away. He ha He's now like the strongest safety tanky top laner. And it would round things out nicely for Splice because then they've got a great engage, they have a solid front line, they have a good team fighting comp. Like, it would just round things out nicely for the overall comp, and then if they think finish things off with, like, a Tom Kench, they'd actually be in a very good position to force plays uh, come the mid lane game. So we have a little bit of everything. Frontline, engage, team fight power. It's just it's too standard for me. I want it is something, very standard, yes. I want something a bit more splicey, you know, a bit more flavorful, and we're going to get it. Kennen in the top lane. So is this an answer to a potential 1-3-1 here? Also a lane bully in the top lane if Vitality want to go for a tank. He definitely can go uh, into the side lane, especially against the Vladimir. That'd be absolutely fine. They're, they're picking this preemptively with the expectation that a Nautilus will come out and it will hopefully deter Vitality away from picking the Nautilus because they're basically saying, well, look, if you're going to pick the Nautilus, it's going to be into a rough match against the Kennen. He's heavily going to outscale you in the late game and uh, he can be an answer to the Vladimir as well. But Vitality are just saying, you know what, we don't care. We want the tank, we want the front line, we want a form of engage, which I do feel they desperately need when the only other form of engage they would have had is the Lisa. Yeah. Uh, very pick-oriented, of course. But that's going to make this landing phase very difficult for Cabochard, won't it? Um, against the cannon, 
Wonder will get his hands in the top lane, and Mickey's going to round up the team composition with further pick power and in I love the it. Thresh. I love this, because what we've been seeing more from Mickey in recent weeks is his movement away from champions like the, the Zyra and the Karma, and more into these pick champions. We've been seeing Camille from him, we've been seeing Braum, we've been seeing Tom Kench, and we've been seeing Thresh. And Mickey, as a player, is very much about trying to make plays. He's about trying to set things up on the map. And on champions like Thresh, he has the ability to do it. Now, if you guys have listened to Crapo in the last few weeks, you would have heard him talk a lot about Ignite Thresh and the amount of power that it has during the laning phase. It's very risky to take that into a Lucian Lulu, which is why he's decided to be a little bit more reserved. He's going more towards this mid to late game with the exhaust. Well, let's find out how much it'll work out. I also like the reduction of burst damage for that Vladimir when he decides to jump into those team fights. Gonna prove to be exceptionally valuable. Steelback getting his hands on the Lucian as well to round up that team comp as Ian and Yamato Cannon shake hands and head off stage. Team composition wise, um, fairly straightforward, I feel, for the Vitality side. Tank on the front line, let Vlad run at you. I think the, the biggest difference is very much about Vitality have a pretty powerful bottom lane with the Lucian and the Lulu, and they should have pushing power with the Vlad in mid. And when we saw them play last week against Origin, this is something that they took advantage of very heavily to enable Joko and Hachani to roam into the enemy jungle, get deep vision, and try and force fights, get picks, which is where they get a lot of their early advantages. I'm so glad you bring that up because it's been Trashy who stepped up for Splice in the last few weeks, and he may be under pressure from the men on your screen from Vitality, Hachani, Steelback, and Joko. Can they? See Synergize in the bottom half of the map. It's Splice versus Vitality in week nine of the EU LCS. And as we've mentioned a few times already, if Splice pick up a single game win, they guarantee mathematically their uh, postseason playoff position. Splice will, uh, Vitality will then be locked into fourth. Right. And every team wants that, right? Like uh, Splice. Yeah. Uh, thinking back to their last split, perhaps they're not performing as well as they would have liked to, but. What is really nice to see is they followed a very similar growth pattern to what they did in their summer split, where they started off a little rough, they were still figuring out the meta, um, they were still trying to find a style that works for them, but now they're at a point where they are considered one of the top teams in Europe. We have to remember that uh, Fnatic, due to their loss to Rocket, you could make the argument that right now, Splice is the stronger side because they haven't dropped a game yet yeah. to this bottom tier team. But yeah. this could be the opportunity for Vitality to get that upset. Well, we're going to see how much uh, Hachani is going to improve the Vitality squad, right? Last week it looked better, but it was again slightly weaker opposition. It was. Um, Splice will be a very different kettle of fish um, than Origin were last week. And we're looking at this lane setup. So, Venice, you're anticipating Steelback and Hachani with this Lucian Lulu to have some fun into Kobe Mickey. Does that level one trade make any differences in your opinion? I mean, it will definitely hurt Hachani <laughs> a little bit, but <laughs> once, on the, <laughs> once the uh, minions show up, the, the problem that Mickey's going to have is that every time he walks up to try and harass Hachani or steal back, he's going to end up taking minion aggro, right? Like, uh, it's super easy for the hyper mobile Lucian to be able to very quickly punish Thrash as he tries to look for these trades. But Hachani, right now, he's not respecting the fact that Vision had already been established by Mickey. Um, and the fact that Splice have gotten themselves a good early push. So for the level one, this could very well go in favor of Splice. But around the level two, level three mark, uh, Splice's bottom lane have to be very careful of the dueling power of Lulu and, and Lucian. Yeah, we'll find out if the LL combo works in their favor. Level two, going to get raced towards on this next minion wave. And it looks like Hachani and Steelback could potentially lose that race. If we take a look up top, Wanda should have a field day. So if Vitality can push down bottom, with Steelback and Achani up in the top lane, surely Wanda has all of the harass potential? He does, he does. Uh, Cannon is really annoying to deal with in lane. Usually you max the W um, because it all you want to get that fifth proc on your lightning mark, which means that you get very easy harass. You walk up to them, you apply the mark, you hit them with the electrical surge. Ah, no, I've taken harassment and you're forced to back <laughs> off. It's really difficult to trade back against the Cannon. Um, but he takes a while, like in terms of his team fight value, depending on what he chooses to build, it actually looks like he's going more for the AD split push build rather than the AoE team fight cannon build, which means that Splice have said, look, we can see what you're trying to do with the Vladimir and we're going to match it with the cannon later on. We'll see how well uh, Wonder can handle that side lane pressure. Uh, we caught a glimpse, by the way, as Joko is picking up his blue buff. Oh, great death sentence onto Hachani. Takes a couple autos for his trouble. Uh, but to finish the thought, Kobe shot the Hawk shot all the way across the minimap. And it spotted Joko out, Splice revealed Joko with the vision and pings and 
That's why Trashy's moving in to steal some of those Raptors in XP. Now, I want to take this very quick moment to illustrate the level difference that you now see between the two junglers. What you will have heard a lot of color casters talking about in the last few weeks is the Raptors start. Um, and the reason why you start Raptors is because they give you more experience. Now, what you've seen is that Trashy actually started on his Raptors, went red, went round to blue, took the Scuttle, and he got level four. Joko, he started on his red, went up to Wolves, went up to blue, came back down, and he's only level three, which is forcing Joko go back and allowing Trashy a lot of pressure in the enemy jungle. Especially with a pushing wave down bottom as Cobby and Mickey got the advantage early. It allowed Mickey to roam. Full support with Trashy. Before steal back and Chani could respond. So good opening play here by Splice. Already 500 gold up because of some you know, big camps being stolen away and some CS advantages for Wonder in the top lane. It's just good pressure overall from Splice, right? They, they know how to play aggressively in this lane. They know how to take advantage of very minor mistakes. But now you're starting to see that Pachani and Stillback are getting better at being able to trade back, right? The, I love the fact that Splice, what you often see is in lanes that you think you're going to struggle in or lose in. You'll either go for the Boots three-pot start or you go for the Longsword three-pot start, right? Uh, in this instance, Kobe actually went for the Doran's Blade because him and Mickey feel comfortable enough that they can actually just trade as often as they want. And because of this early power, advantage that you have by going for the Doran's Blade, it means that they're actually getting this push and they're actually forcing Vitality bottom lane back. And I think it's so important you bring up Kobe and Mickey being comfortable with the itemization and the lane play, because this is a duo that has been playing together for a sizable length of time. Going on around a year for Kobe and Mickey as a duo, and Hachani and Steelback, well, Steelback's had three different supports to split already. You know, AOD, Nuke Duck, and the fabled return of Hachani. Well, let's see what he can do to, you know, claw back this deficit. Splice just slowly but surely inching forward with their, uh, the gold difference to good farm. Now, you need to keep your eyes on the top lane because the Trinket Ward has actually just ran out for Wonder. He's pushed up pretty far in the top lane. That could have been a great opportunity for Joko to actually try and push in, try and look for a gank. The minion wave wasn't actually that big for Wonder. Um, but instead, he's going to choose to play it safe. I guess that when you are playing a Nautilus, better to just be safe than sorry. Just get what farm you can, accept the deficit, and realize that in terms of the value in, in crowd control that I bring later on, it's going to be bigger than that of the cannon. Yeah, points and click CC, always going to be exceptionally valuable. Um, looking at Trashy, though, he was the one that went for that early invade, doing it again onto this Raptor camp. Uh, looks like Joker's going to at least get the small camps away. Smite be smite, and it's picked up. But Trashy grabbed himself that one. But Trashy's been sort of the turnaround player for Splice. Um, his first four weeks of performance versus his most recent four weeks. A marked improvement. The meta shifted a little bit in his favor. Look at this. Jungle proximity time, the amount of time Trashy spends with his mates, the same across the last eight weeks. But look how effective. His kills plus assists at 15 minutes is in his kill participation. Trashy as an individual just has a much better understanding of what he needs to be doing on the map and how better he can utilize this kind of uh, pressure. It's great to see him as an individual really stepping up because he was one of the players that we had nothing but praise for in the summer split of last year. He was, again, one of the big turning points in setting up his <laughs> laners for success. And now we see an all-in from both top laners in the top. Well, there we go. The tank beats the carry. That's that's standard, right? Uh, at this level. I mean, it's recurve bow. Wonder needs a lot of time to get damage down, whereas Cabo, full rotation, drops Wonder to what was that, like 25%? It shouldn't have a huge impact on the lane, though. It's uh, pretty good so far from what Spice have been able to do now. What you're seeing is actually, this is great from Spice, because thanks to the early pressure that they were able to exert down in the bottom lane, the way in which they're constantly playing the harass play has forced Steelback to go back on a Vamp Scepter. Now, the reason why we're seeing more Lucian on the current patch is because uh, very small changes were made to his Q and his W and the way in which his passive interacts, which means that it flows better. It feels more fluid and dynamic. And that means that he's also building in the Blade of the Rune King, which actually hurts your laning phase quite a lot and can mean that if you fall behind early, you can't play as aggressively as you would typically like. And it allows Steelback to basically ice skate around the map yep. later in the game. Get those uh, those E's, those relentless pursuits down over and over. Dash forward, Mickey. Not going to connect with the Flay. Didn't really make a big difference. And Mickey was the one that secured that Dragon number one. Eight minutes in. It's a thousand gold in the lead for Splice. It's an early Dragon. Um, and Splice will be pretty happy with this. They have a potential answer. 
to the 4-1 that could come out from Vitality. They've got good pick-making potential. They've got decent engage, but it is very reliant on hitting those skill shots. Right? And what you'll see from uh, Splice is I would expect them really to be the playmakers that when you have an Ash Arrow and at least Cocoon, uh, you are looking to try and force a lot of skirmishes around the map. While they were setting up for a good team fight composition, and while they definitely still have a viable team fight composition, Nick, you can never underestimate Orianna Ash cannon, right? Yeah. It's not as potent as it necessarily would have been if they'd gone for the full AP cannon. Instead, they are preparing for the possibility of, hey, if we fall behind in the early game for whatever reason, and that Vladimir is able to split push, what answer do we have to it? And that's why this cannon is here. That's why this cannon is going for this build. Okay, so we'll find out if cannon's build works out with support from Trashy. Uh, gonna come toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joker, but look at the mini-map. Cobby and Mickey are around. Enchanted Crystal Arrow could find a target if they decided to pull the trigger. The Trashy spotted out by the Warden. Again, this is Splice. They initiate the lane swap. Hachani's a little late to respond because he's helping Joku in the jungle. And a lot of damage going onto this tower as support now from Trashy comes up in the river. There's a lot of wave clear from Cabo though. He's full health. He hasn't actually taken a huge amount of harassment from Wanda while he is at a significant lane deficit. The actual setup for that splice took a lot longer than they would have liked. So now, Wanda's gonna be forced to TP down bottom and he needs to be careful. Oh wow, teleport for teleport. Cabo matches it. The minion wave is slowly being shredded and Wanda Forced to flash to save his life. Now, Wonder, he used the ultimate to try and clear the minion wave as fast as possible, along with setting up the CC to prevent Vitality from getting the dive. Notice that he was able to stun both Steelback and Cabo Shard before they could successfully set up the dive, which means that he's able to get away with his life. But I don't know for how much longer he's going to be able to hold on to that tower. All right, so it's a race for Tower First Blood. Very big gold bounty available for secure. Trashy stood right on top of a ward. So Vitality will keep pushing unabashedly in the bottom lane. Without Nautilus in the top lane, the wave clear is significantly lower. This should be Town First Blood to Splice. Good movement from Splice. They make the rotation from bot side to top. Utilize the fact that they got level six first. They'd already pushed Steel back underneath this turret down the bottom lane. And they will be able to net themselves an early advantage. Arrow comes out. All right, connects onto Hachani. Flash over the wall for Trashy. Death centers, kills Hachani. First blood to Splice. Oh, Hachani. He ends up getting caught out. The vision from Splice is deep enough that they're able to spot him as he's trying to recall. Questionable decision making from Hachani. Why recall in your jungle when there's a tower right next to you? Um, but still, it will be first blood going in favor of Splice. And look at that gold advantage. The 11th time that Hachani has died in an isolated manner. With none of his teammates around. This time around, unfortunately, just Splice pulling the trigger. So they get first dragon, they get first tower, they get first blood. It's a two and a half thousand gold lead. And Splice is going to be extremely happy with the opening to this game. Yep. So now all they do is with dragon off the board, they can... Uh, actually look to set up a die bottom lane because now there's only one member left. The push is already coming out from Kobe. Slicing Maelstrom's almost available. Where's the death sentence from Mickey? A lot of support from the rest of Splice. Defensive flash, Wanda can connect. Blade of the Rune King slows down Cabo. Point blank, skill shot. And Mickey sets up another. They don't even need all five members. Mickey and Wanda are able to get that themselves. Cabo even used his flash and it wasn't enough. And Look at this, the additional attack speed that Wanda had gotten from the Blade of the Ruin King. The fact that he was able to quickly apply those Mark of the Storms, get the stun, easy follow with the chain, very clean. I wouldn't even call that a dive. That was just no. a clean execution from Splice. I mean, Splice are just running circles around Vitality. The first tower is picked up here for Vitality, but it's at the cost of Cabo's life and the bottom tower. And all of this vision, what? Splice aren't even done. They're still putting pressure on the map. Bear in mind that it was Splice that made the proactive play first. They were the ones that got to the tower before Vitality. And because now there's no answer for Vitality, Splice ended up coming out ahead in the trade. Such a clean opening to the game. And you know, the analyst desk, um, Shox and Krepper were talking about expectations versus reality. This was the expectation of what Splice was going to do at the beginning of the split. Took them a while to find their gear, took them a while to, you know, improve a few patches as well. But what a great start against, look, it is also the fourth place team. You know, let's not disregard that fact. But I think it's really worth praising how every member, except for arguably the mid laners because they weren't doing anything, just farming. But uh, 
work together in order to guarantee the successful early game because one day he was constantly pushing in the top lane netting himself a 50 cs advantage now at this point the bottom lane they took advantage of a very powerful level one to force steelback and hachani back trashy took a jungle path which gave him level four before joko got level four which means that he then moved into the jungle kept applying pressure joko could not push a uh, punish the pushing lanes of splice and they end up getting this huge lead in the early game. All right, but now will Splice be able to react, engage from the depth charge? Trashy finds the lantern, and Mickey saves his jungler's life. It will be at the cost of a tower. Splice this time round caught a little unawares, but they still have a sizable lead. And it feels like, to sort of summarize what you were saying a second ago, Vidius, the early game for Splice, they had a game plan, and it feels like every single thing they wanted to accomplish happened, right? Yeah. They found the picks, they found the invades, they got the objectives, and this was the first counterplay from Vitality that has proved successful. I think that it, uh, it was just a little bit slow on the mark from Splice. They were, um, they were a little bit late to leave the bottom half of the jungle after they took that tower. Uh, they were still deciding, okay, what's the next objective we go for? Because taking down that mid tier one is a lot harder than taking down the outer towers. So now they need to better set up. What's our next game plan? Baron isn't really an hey. option for them. Senkux, he tries to throw out the ball of doom. And unfortunately, it's just a ball of gloom for him. Uh, it is indeed. But Spice overall, they're playing the map very well. They are now even, or they have the advantage in terms of turrets, which they'll be pleased with. And their uh, next objective should be towards this mountain drake. They can get, they've already got the deep vision set up in the bottom half. You can see that because they know where the majority of the Vitality members are, Mickey should feel pretty comfortable to walk in and start setting up this vision. You're talking about the dragon. If Splice are able to secure it, it will actually be the 60-second dragon that Vitality have conceded. They've given up. Seconds. Yes, they have currently given up 61 dragons throughout the course of the spring split. It is the most amount of dragons that they have given away. Wow. Yes, and uh, it just shows you mentality in terms of the prioritization, not around the dragon pit. Uh, also interesting to note. Hey, that's Watch not fair. CSD that's at not 15. fair. <laughs> hey, it still counts. <laughs> Last week he played Fizz into Gragas, so and now he's playing Cannon into Nautilus. Like, definitely, it's warranted. Um, he. Likes fact to play this style. Fact. It is a fact, yes. Um, <laughs> and now we see the dragon being started. This is the objective we were talking about. Will Vitality answer? The answer is fight. Choco's going to get caught by a death sentence and the arrow. Double teleport into the river. Splice, smite down the dragon. It looks like Cabo. He cancels the TP. Hachani's caught by a cocoon. Splice get dragon and two kills as well. Very clean play from Splice. They had good setup around the dragon. They had full vision control. I feel like the communication from Vitality oh, was not on point. Where's the sombrero? Flash! Sombrero it! Sombrero it! Still back gets pulled backwards and Senkux with the solo kill. Adios, mi amigo. Oh my word. Wonder also gets a kill. Like, it's gone from bad to terrible. Yep. Splice, they're on a rampage right now. They are steamrolling through the lineup of Vitality. After they win a fight around the dragon, they just turn from one kill to another to another. And this mid lane tower that we were talking about being difficult to be able to take, it's going to be an open door for Splice to now walk through. Yeah, open door indeed. Tower number four. Man, what a great start to this game. Okay, so, Splice, you've done everything else well. You've had a pick and ban that had answers to a team composition that Vitality put in place. Splice had a good early game which they've executed on well. Now we get to judge their ability to close. Yep. At 17 minutes, Vedius. <laughs> that's, that's a lot earlier than yeah. usual. I mean, yes. Um, I think that for Spikes now, you can start eyeing the Baron response in three minutes. I mean, like... I the the, it's not even there yet. The, I know, right? They the need problem, a telescope. <laughs> the problem is, like, normally you'd see this kind of advantage, this setup, uh, at around the 22, 25 minute mark, right? And that's when Baron becomes an easier objective. When you have this big of a lead, um, I mean, like, they have a big item advantage, that's for sure, but now all Vitality have to do is just not fight them, right? Yeah. Uh, and instead, Vitality, they have to be so careful. They have no real control over the map. Just look at the vision coming out from Splice. They are so comfortable in their setup. They've now moved Wonder off to a side lane, so that now they can just rotate between Wonder and mid, and they can just keep the pressure on, and eventually they're going to take one of these turns. Okay, where is the wave clear here? Steelback still got the culling on cooldown. It's just about to peel off in Splice. They move away from where Vitality have numbers and instead go to secure a safe objective. Crystal Arrow, Cocoon, Death Sentence, all of the CC can lock somebody down. 
Hachani is making his way forward, and Mickey gets a death sentence onto Nuketak, brings Senkax for support. Nuketak instantly goes into Sanguine Pool and flashes to safety. He has the re-engage. Senkax in a little bit of trouble. Death sentence goes between two targets, and Vitality, they lose Joko. Cabo's forced to flash away, and this should be another dredge line into Cobby's waiting hands for the double kill. Spice with a very clean fight once again. They're able to catch Nukta because he's trying to set up a flank around onto Spice in the enemy jungle. But it goes against what we were just talking about. Yep. Vitality, they just needed to buy time. They needed to wait. There's such a deficit at this point in the game that there is no chance that they can fight. Because, like, just look at the level difference. Wonder, he's level 13. Senkex, he has a level advantage over his counterpart. And while Steelback, sure, he's been farming all off in a side lane. What does it matter when you've lost pretty is much Is there enough base? time for an inhibitor? I think the answer to that is, is yes. Steel back, no culling available, not real support. 19 minute inhibitor. Paging the stats team. Is that the earliest inhibitor of the split? I just asked them that, quick shot. Yeah, but I, I asked on air, so my <laughs> question's more valuable. <laughs> We're gonna make the stats team work today, Venus. Um, after this replay of, of course, Nuketak getting caught. But you can see that the full vision in this jungle just enables Splice to be able to land these kind of picks. Where's the support from Vitality, right? Oh, we don't have time for that because Mickey, he's forced to flash. We talked about being out of position, and then Mickey, he goes and bees out of position. Don't bees out of position. You get stung. That's what happens. <laughs> but Hachani, he's at Mickey this time around, set, uh, vibes with his life. All right, what's this? 10,000 gold lead, um, inhibitor, eight kills, seven towers, two dragons, and nearly a flame horizon for Wonder, all before 20 minutes. If you wanted to gift wrap a Nexus, these are the steps yep. that you need to follow. <laughs> I mean, like, so we've we've praised Splice a lot, but I now actually want to criticize Joker a little bit because we have to look at his early game. He played Elise Sin as an answer to be able to sort of match the early pressure that Elise put out. His jungle path thing was set up in a way in which he was looking to try and gank top early, which in a way makes sense. You have a lot of utility with the Nautilus. You can look to punish the overextending cannon, but then he paths back down throughout his jungle. So he didn't take an optimal early start. It seemed a little bit haphazard, he didn't really know what he was doing. I felt like the Vitality, again, they didn't come in with a clear game plan. They picked champions which were strong. They picked champions that made sense with, in terms of the laning against the enemy team, like it was safe. But then they seemed to come into this game it's, without a real game plan. It's also tough though, right? Like, yes, Joker has a champion that could have made a difference, but where? You know, um, he got invaded on early. The picks from Kobe onto Hachani in the jungle opened up a tower. You know, like, a lot of where Vitality started to fall over was from some of their laners being punished by a really clever splice. I mean, it's, it's it depends, on which, yeah, it's it's, it depends things, on which perspective you want to take, right? Yeah. Because the reason in which why Joko ended up getting invaded was because he chose not to start on his Raptors rather than starting and, on his blue, right? Like, and the Hawk shot from Kobe giving that information, allowing them to do it. Um, Vedius, Baron has been started by Splice. As we predicted. There we go. Very early on, there's no vision. Thank you, observers. Look at no wards from Vitality. The minimap is just littered with Splice Vision. The safest Baron we've seen in a long time. It's actually impressive how one-sided this let's, game is towards Splice. Let's look at the gold differences for Splice uh, over the last eight weeks. We're going to split it into Splice's first four weeks of performance versus their next four weeks of performance. And it is, it is day and night. The red line is Splice's gold difference on average from weeks one to four. And the gold line is the last four weeks. And this uh, game is definitely going to help that climb even further. It's just evidence to show how much Spice has grown in the second half of the split. They seem to really better understand how to get an early gold advantage and then how to utilize it and close out games. So Spice right now, 22 minutes, they have the band. They're knocking on the doors of Vitality's base. Oh, they're knocking on multiple doors. The front door's gone down as Wonder's knocked out the bottom lane. Spice are working on the back door. As that tower's under pressure, no one from Vitality is stopping Wonder. They can't deal with him. Witsand, Blade of the Rune King, an army of minions at his side. An inhibitor's down at 22 minutes, and he can even look to come in to pressure the Nexus or come in behind Vitality. Spice at this point, they don't even need to fight. Oh, good kick from Joko. It is, but there's no support. Finally, Nuketuck arrives, but the fight may already be over. Nuketuck goes down, wild growth, a literal waste. Hachani's gonna be the next target. Death Sentence won't catch him out, and Splice, they're looking at the Nexus Towers. Somehow, Wonder's done it under the base. Wonder, he's looking to try and end the game himself, but can steal back Claw back at least one 
one kill for Vitality. Hitani will not. Uh, Hitani is oh, down. Wonder. Wonder gets the stun. Relentless pursuit, but the range is too short. Steel oh, back no. gets his first kill of the game before the fangs are sunk in. Splice win the fastest game of spring and secure their spot in the quarterfinals. Oh, Wonder. You had to just give away that kill, didn't you? Look, I got very excited at the end. That was a very hype win moment yeah. for what was a 23 minutes obliteration. I was expecting more from Vitality. Uh, I thought that they would at least put up like nothing but praise for Splice. They, they played that map very well. Uh, but I thought that maybe Vitality would at least try something. But I suppose with the composition, it's difficult to force fights, uh, especially against Splice, who had netted such a significant lead so early on in the game. It is indeed. You know, Splice just got so fed, so fed so early. It was just a sweet victory. Very well played. You can see ecstatic smiles on their faces. And um, Vedius, I must let you know, the stats team has got back to me. Yep. The earliest inhibitor of the Spring Split was 18 minutes and 21 seconds, which is what Unicorns of Love were able to secure. This one at 19.06 doesn't quite cut it. So Splice is slacking is what we're saying. What they did do, however, despite not getting the earliest inhibitor, they won the game in the shortest time of Spring so far. Wow, congratulations, Splice. It's, it's so odd. I mean, it was just such a, such a good game from Splice. Um, and... and you can't really criticize Vitality a huge amount because it was proactive plays. Look, you can, but... I mean, it's, it's a combination of the two, right? Like, very small mistakes on the side of... Um, Vitality? Like, let's think about, like, the level one play uh, early on in the bottom lane, right? Hachani just walking up, t losing half Agreed. his health. No, you then course. lose the ability to push early yeah, on, right? Fair. One of the greatest powers of Lulu and uh, Lucian is you just put the shield on the, the Lucian, he can then go aggressive, he can start to trade in. You have a range advantage over the Thrash, and fair. you can look to uh, try and take advantage of that, right? Which they, they conceded very early on because they were playing the lane super safe. They took a lot of harass. Joker with his early jungle path thing. Like, there are very small things that Spice did a great job of punishing. <laughs> very, very many things they did a great job of making even bigger. I mean, I don't think I've seen a snowball that clean or that well executed in a long time. And uh, game one stomp, they Spliced. They did secure that spot in the LCS Spring Quarter Finals. Let's head over to the analyst desk to find out exactly how they did it. Thank you very much. Quick shots, I, uh, quick shots. I also think that's very important, the fact that Splice closed it out and had a super clean game, fastest win in the spring split because they wanted to make a statement or you'd want yep. a team like Splice to make a statement running into the playoffs. Yeah, and I like what they did in, in the draft as well because it suits their style very much. So I love Wunder on this cannon on the side lane. It also went against every like historically strong point we made for Vitality, right? Like, what do we want to see Cabochard on? Mm -hmm. Carries, fighting, you know, who fits that style as well? Wonder. Cabochard gets put on Nautilus duty, he gets counterpicked with the cannon. That's an impossible matchup to play. The only thing you can do is get some CS. And then pray that your team wins the map, and it clearly wasn't happening with this draft. Bot lane was pushing in because Mickey X was playing half fantastically. There was some really nice flays in lane, really punishing the lack of synergy between Hachani and Steelback. And I think so. Spice was always in control. Yeah, always in control. At 8 minutes and 30, they were 1,200 gold ahead. Wonder, as you said, was doing really well in that lane. Bottom lane was winning. Trashy also had yeah. a good influence on the map. That's uh, at that point where they were so even. And then eventually they, they understood how to take the game. And that, that's actually a beautiful set of map rotations and shocks. To really explain that, I'm going to need a bigger television. So uh, you, you can stay here. But I really want to show the world how great that play was from Spice. Because this was just not rotations one-on-one. -on -one. This was every single action they did had a purpose, and it really worked out, especially if you consider how the replay started. We started off with a freeze from Hachani. So this is a nice play, right? Like Vitality, they see an opening, they're already behind in lane. Hachani's like, you know what? I'm gonna catch these five creeps. Park, him, park the bus right here, steal back. You get the easiest job as an AD carry in your life. You just have to farm these creeps to the turret. Now, Spice, they know this is happening. So what they do is they send their bottom lane to the top lane and say, you know what, we're going to surprise Cabochard. Notice how Mickey and Kabi are not just running down the lane and playing for the turret. No, these guys are actually going to hide, wait for a window where they can maybe engage. And now Steelbacks, he's, he's sniffing something. He's like, yeah, I don't like this, guys. These guys should have been back in bot lane already. So you see Vitality play very defensively, and this is a good defense from Vitality. But Spice are still playing super correct. They wait to go for the turret. The engage kind of gets foiled, and now this is a move I like personally from Vitality. They switch the map up. They say, you know what? We have one guy in the bottom, Steelback has been pushing. We can send Cabo going for a dive, but a very well-timed cannon flash and cannon ultimate makes it so that Wunder can stall the defense on the turret long enough. You know what happens on the other side of the map? Spice eventually pushed through, and this should be kind of a net neutral exchange in a play that was started by Spice, but a good defense by Vitality. But the problem is, right after, 
the power of Spice Determination picks too, because they get a nice arrow that's going to come out here and they get a single pick. And now is no longer a case of an even trade with first turret going to Spice. No, it is an additional kill and the tempo and the flash of cool into hook, you know, all this synergy is much better for Spice. And you can see Vitality, they were already behind and they start crumbling apart. Obviously, if you play strong on one side of the map, what you do when you base is you switch it back up. And that's what we see right here. Kabe down to the bottom lane, but look at Mickey. He peels off. He's like, you know what? I don't need to defend Kabe. I can just join with my jungler, pull him over, or my top laner in this case. And they surprise Cabochard. And this is the kind of the experience. Wunder didn't go back to top lane. In solo queue, your top laner would always go back to the top side. But he knows if he goes top, he will just get dove, just like Cabochard got dove in the bottom lane. And this means there's nobody to defend. And yes, there's two people top lane, and Hachani and Lucian uh, and Steelback rather are working on this top turret. But Spice, again, much faster on the play. They get an extra kill again. They get a turret down here. And when they're already at the second tower, that's only when Joko starts joining here with Steelback. And what, what's Joko doing? They're basing to the de defend the bottom lane. Again, Spice, one step ahead. One extra kill, then another kill, then an extra turret. They're really breaking down this game and just dismantling Vitality step by step. And that's pretty much it. Eventually, Senkux walks top picks up the farm, and it just shows you if you're a great team and you're planning things together, it is really easy for you to kind of get ahead of your opponent as long as you have a plan. And Spice, they had that plan. They broke down Vitality. That's enough from our side. Shox is getting lonely, so I need to get back to the desk. See you guys after break.